Hello again. This is a retro find from the 1980s, uh, from the year 1984 to be exact. It's a Auric Atmos and it uh, came out after the Auric one, which was, uh, which was slightly earlier. It had a much improved uh, ROM, uh, which made it a lot easier to use. Um, I thought I'd just show you the unboxing because I'm very lucky here to actually have the original box and I think I've got a lot of um, the original stuff as well inside it so uh, let's take this out and have a look um, so the actual computer was manufactured by a company called Tangerine Computers and like a lot of computers in the early 80s it was quite a vibrant scene everyone was trying to get ahead and try to get a share of the lucrative market and obviously we had the likes of this, the uh, Sinclair computers like the Sinclair Spectrum also the um, Commodore computers as well which seem to be the main players of the time let's have a look inside so the pulleys look good condition that's the inner ones let's spin this round and there you go, very nice um, condition still. Now it's not been powered on for quite some time. Um, I picked this up, it was probably oh, at least 15 years ago um, and I paid £10 for it. Um, I remember buying Alex 81s for sort of £10 as well. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a Auric Atmos computer and we've got several um, ports on the back here it's actually got UHF so that would go to a standard set RGB signal uh, tape so these are the DINs that you might have seen on cassette recorders as well at the time and uh, there's printer port expansion port here and of course the power there so everything on the back there built-in speaker yeah there's a the built-in speaker is actually on the on the bottom and that's the text the label on the on the bottom here so it just says invalid if uh, case is opened and uh, the address is Cambridge so Cambridge um, also the home of Sinclair at the time so two three eight five seven Eight is the serial number on this one and there's a little sticker there which is probably a sign of being qu quality uh, passed um, after it was assembled so yeah I don't think that's ever been taken apart it's got some got really nice sort of keyboard it's quite a small computer again similar size to the Sinclair Spectrum but um, really really nicely done keys almost in keeping with some of the early sort of PC keyboards that nice sort of feel that you get so let's have a look at what came with it okay we got the Auric Atmos manual everything you could want to know about using it and beginning with the basic language as well so all this kind of stuff is, um, you know, unless uh, kids are doing this at school, um, the, there's tons of stuff that they're kind of missing out on these days, really. Um, and obviously, um, the basic language was a was a great place to uh, to start back then. Lots of um, explanations there on the commands available, which is nice. in the back it looks like we can buy another book <laughs> so it's a couple of tapes that have come with the machine now I don't know if it just came with one tape or if it did have both tapes um, perhaps someone can let me know but this is the companion sort of tape that, um, that I guess quite a few machines would have a companion sort of tape what does this one say the V1 Auric Basic and corporates routines okay so 
that's that. And there's a game here, 48K. It's the uh, game called Ultima Zone. And full instructions there, also how to load it. Now there was a issue with the loading um, of games and it was quite frustrating, I think, if you were using this to type in your own games and you wanted to save them. Um, often, depending on the tape player recorder that you used, you'd have problems when you tried to reload the game back in. And these tapes probably would really struggle to load in now. Um, so um, I believe it was due to not having very good error checking. And there was a bug in the uh, actual ROM. So um, the way to get around it these days, if you've got a work in Auric Atmos, is to get a expansion and you can basically plug it in and read from an SD card and you can get some images offline tap files for the actual games and programs. So that's probably the way to go there. And then finally, we've got the Auric power supply. It's got Ascot Berkshire on there and uh, that's quite a chunky thing I guess they were in that age and what have we got here a few well, you can see these haven't come out so it says using your stereo headphone with mono equipment that doesn't look like that should even be in there does it okay so there's your aerial to your tv and this i would imagine is for your cassette player so there you go, just a very quick show of a Auric Atmos in pretty neat condition, I would say. Luckily, it's been kept um, in a reasonable temperature room. It's not being kept in the loft, so um, hopefully this should be good to go. I will try a video in the future where I power it up and try to load some uh, games. Um, I'm aware that some of the components inside can get quite hot, so um, I'll probably um, make sure I do that on a on a cooler day. So um, there you are. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick video for a Friday. And if you like and subscribe, I shall do some more in the future. And I will definitely uh, fire this up as well. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.